Welcome everyone. This is Realize Resilience. I'm Alistair Gray and I'm delighted to be joined by one of my best mates, Stuart Sandeman today. Hello, how are you doing? Good to have you, Stu. <laughs> it's good to be here. And, and Stu and I go way back, you know, we've been to give the audience a little bit of context to, and then I'll explain, you know, who you are and, and what it is you do. But Stu and I go way back as friends. We've been uh, best friends since kind of the age of 18. Uh, that friendship was formed uh, in a crazy six month experience in Ibiza, where we were club promoters. But we both come from the same city in Edinburgh and our sisters are great friends. And our friendship forged <laughs> that summer in Ibiza. And ever since, our paths have been, you know, pretty aligned, albeit following different paths, but, um, but always being close and connected and, uh, and, and, you know, I suppose enjoying some of the best part of our 20s together. Not that we can remember too many of them, but uh, a great experience anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you gave the conservative part of the story. I'm like, which, 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 which? Story you're going to tell here, but yeah, no, it's, it's been been a while. We've um, been to quite a lot together, actually. Yeah, all sorts of fun times and and shoulders to cry on sometimes too, as well. So, I guess that's more fitting for this discussion. Well, I, absolutely. And you know, on that point, before we jump in, Stu, and I'm I'm going to invite you to share, you know, your own story of resilience in a moment. But you know, Stuart now is one of the world's leading breath experts. He runs and owns a company called BreathPod, founded BreathPod. God, I might get the year wrong, Stuart. When was the year that you founded it? All time right now is all merging into one. Um, yeah, it four, three, four years ago. Three, four years ago. Yeah. And, and we've had the pleasure, you know, Stuart's trained in so many different modalities of breath work, has really dived in deep uh, to become a true expert in your field, Stuart. And I know you work with some incredible people Obviously, corporate organizations such as Google, Nike, huge companies, the everyday individual, but also Olympic athletes, sports stars, you name it. You're kind of the man that, that everyone comes to when it comes to breath, including me. I'm fortunate. I get the free sessions. But, but um, it's really great to have you on here today. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for your time. I know how busy you are. Uh, and I think for us to have some time with you and to hear your story of resilience is you know, really quite quite special. So thanks again for coming on. And maybe we'll use that opportunity. You mentioned we've been through a lot together, we've experienced incredible highs together throughout life. And there's been some incredible lows as well. And I think you said there, you know, we've been a shoulder to cry on. And, you know, that, that's been the truth many times. So I would love for you to share your side of the story about our partnership and relationship, because we do a lot of work together as well, Stuart and I. But um, but also to share, you know, your your own story of coming through adversity, and uh, and the resilience that you realise within it. So I'll hand over to you, Stu, to to jump in. Thank you. Yeah, where to begin? There's, like you said, there's, there's there's many stories to be told about our our relationship together and, and times together. But I think, like you said, we're really forged was probably through the toughest time in my life. Anyway, um, we'd always had a lot of fun together since that. Ibiza days that kind of paved for me a very musical aspect, this very creative part. I, I was, we were club promoting, but I was also DJing, and that became a, a, a big hobby of mine running events in London alongside my corporate job in finance when we all worked together in London. And, and fortunately, that part of, of my life became that hobby, became my, my full time job when I signed some record deals. and, and you were on those road, road trips sometimes as well, um, carrying the record, dancing, the in, the, dancing in the club. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I guess where we really kind of reconnected on a, on a on a deeper level than than a lot of friendships was through the, a tough time was when my girlfriend was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Um, a real hard experience but also a, a time of growth uh personal growth um really looking at a lot of different parts of myself and and life in general i think something when it's, it's um potent as sort of a, a, a terminal disease or a cancer which it was 
when you're faced with this kind of life or death situation, it, it starts making you think, well, why am I here and what's going on? And, and um, yeah, so that's, that's, I know you were super supportive for me through those times, like I said, um, in more ways than one. And, and um, that part of the story, well, she didn't make it, she, she passed away and, and that was a hard nut to swallow. I think there's a lot, a lot happens with, with grief. Um, and for me in particular, it was kind of putting a lot of blame on myself and, and a lot of anger and frustration and guilt. And, and um, at that time, you were you were also launching the Mindful Talent business. So uh, it was a very welcomed, because I don't know Ali, I'm going to interview Ali in a minute. <laughs> but Ali's one of the most positive people I know. And, and I think when, when we had that chat, you said, why don't you help me with this? this business I don't know where it's going to go and how it will help and I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when you were talking about coaching work and, and I just wanted to be with, with, a, with a good friend so that's where we kind of really forge this this friendship on a deeper level and, and supporting each other through and I know you were going through shifts as well at that time and um, changing your career and, and having a baby and all these different big life shifts so we've always been on that interesting very different path but very parallel path with what we're experiencing, whether it was through partying in Ibiza, working in corporate jobs, and then create, um, being off from a more sort of hedonistic view, traveling, me DJing, and then coming back together when we were going through some shit. So it's, it's been a, a, a colorful journey together for sure. Uh, and like I said, it's quite a, quite a challenging one at times. And I think the that whole period reshaped me as a person and, and going through grief not only found coaching work and how that could help kind of using the conscious mind to navigate through adversity or, or challenges but that's also where I found the power of how we breathe um, or using the breath or breath work as a tool to make a positive transformation a positive shift allowing me to release pent-up tension and, and emotion so that I could move forward and that's Ultimately, where this big pivot happened for me, this big transformation was was at that period through grief, through have, having that kind of real low point, but then also not realizing that it was a, a place to really blossom and flourish in a different direction. Uh, I think it's the last thing I ever, if I'd even, I'd say even five years ago, if Mystic Meg said, oh, you're going to teach people to breathe and you're going to be working with um corporates and athletes telling them how to breathe I would have thought you're completely bonkers um so it's funny I think it's we think we've got life all planned out and we we think we're on on the track and we we know it all um but then life also often has these different plans and kind of veers us in a new direction uh, so that's yeah that's a overview of, of what brought me here and what brought me to breath work and I think it was through my own experience of both coaching and breathwork, but, but mainly breathwork as a tool to make this huge shift in my life. I thought, wow, how could I make myself change my state and change my way of being, my way of thinking, my way of acting, my way of performing, or whatever it is we can, we're doing, we can really switch it up just by looking at our breathing and, and understanding our breathing and making that positive change. So... Um, that was the experience that I had just deep dived me into wanting to know more. Why wasn't I taught how to breathe when I was doing sport when I was growing up or when I was at school, when I was going into exams, feeling nervous. So all these different times, all these different points in my life where understanding how I was breathing and how that was affecting uh, my state. I wish I'd known. And, and that's what speared me to explore this a little bit further. And you're also using this, this, this other deeper part of, of um, realizing the depth at which we could access just through breathing alone. Um, having explored meditations and different things like that, it wasn't until I started breath work that I could access that pure state of awareness that I'd read about in other places or the monks who talk about that I couldn't personally access from meditation. I know a lot of people can. I just didn't find it possible um, to kind of free myself from this sort of physical body and, and mind 
to access that space of, of awareness, which I found very easy through breathwork. So that's what kind of paved the path. And I just a, wanted to learn more um, about breathing and understanding that because it helped me so much initially through grief, but through these other aspects of my life that I thought, well, everyone needs this. How can I learn a bit more and, and share it with others? It's, it's amazing, Stu. And every time I hear the story, it's interesting because I, you know, I listen to it now as a, as a, you know, almost a reflection on a period of life that there was really tumultuous and, and yet I, I kind of have this uh, smile about me because I remember the, the first day we, we were at the time working in a basement office in Edinburgh, Stuart and I, and I remember the, the day, I think it was the day after you'd participated in your first breathwork session and you were kind of like, you know, having been through months of, of real heartache and, and struggle, right, and grief, I remember this light being about you and you kind of coming bounding into the the office and you're like just try this breath work you need to come and try it like there was something that had shifted quite significantly in you and 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 I'm not even sure you knew what it was at the time but it, it seemed something quite magical so can you tell us a little bit about you know that that first experience of of breath work and how it impacted you in that moment of you know real darkness that you were in yeah um, well, it, it caught me by surprise, to be to be honest. Like I said, it was not anything that I'd even thought about. I just took my mum for Mother's Day. Um, so it was quite early on in, in that experience of grief. So Mother's Day is kind of mid-March and end of March. And uh, Tiffin, who passed away, my girlfriend passed away on, on Valentine's Day of all days. Um, she left on Valentine's Day. So it was about a month or five weeks after her passing. She was still very raw. And like you said, it had been quite a hard 18 months of um, trying to figure out a cure or should we go this way or that way or what was out there. So it was quite a hard time. But when she passed and I was in a, just in a dark space, I'm very fortunate to have an amazing family and, and support where I'd moved back home to, to Scotland. I hadn't lived there for many years by that point. I'd been living in, in all over the place, London, Hong Kong, Barcelona. Um, and I just I, I just took my mum for Mother's Day to this breathwork class. My mum's a yoga instructor. I thought breathing yoga, she'll like that. That's cool. So we went together. Stu's mum was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's 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 awesome. And um, so I didn't. I thought I'd just be sitting there breathing. To be honest, I didn't really think too much of it. Uh, I didn't look too much into it. It'd been a last minute decision because I was meeting her for Mother's Day, and I think probably about five hours before meeting her, I thought, "Oh my God, I need to get a present." Um, so I'd gone in just kind of for her, and although the the practice was called transformational breath i tried so many different modalities of healing and and this is to to diss on other forms of healing or, or practices but i'd become a bit like skeptical because a i'd we tried so many and everybody had a cure for cancer um and we we lived in la when we were going through cancer treatment and went through every alternative you could imagine from all types of therapy and for me, it felt very much this woo-woo space. And I just was like, right, none of this really works. Um, none of this has helped. So I'd kind of pulled myself back, being very open to these different alternatives. I pulled myself back to think, no, everything needs to be a more hard science. Like we need to really be looking at clinically proven stuff. And, and here I was taking my mum to my breathing class and thinking, oh yeah, we'll just sit there and breathe. And, and like I said, it was a really, really powerful experience. Not dissimilar um, in potency, not, not uh, to other things that I've done, like plant medicines and things like that as well. Some of it different, not quite as harsh as, as some of those experiences. But what had happened, well, firstly, there was a physical rushes and sensations, the tingling, the buzzing that, I mean, we I've definitely lived a fruitful life. We've been in Ibiza. There's, there's, at, experiences different feelings like that usually from um, an external source or or taking something to enhance uh, a night out or something so I thought wow what's happening here this feels incredible but then it just felt 
deeply emotional and also connecting to this space, this real space of being that, well, firstly, I felt my girlfriend was there holding my hand, um, kind of telling me that everything was okay and that this is exactly what was meant to happen. So it was really weird, <laughs> if I could say that, really weird at first. I'm like, am I, have I lost the plot? Am I going mad? Is this my imagination? Is there something else here? What is someone putting my water before coming into this breathing session? So is that weird space of, whoa, 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 what's happening here? But whatever it was, it felt really powerful and healing and supportive. It threw up a lot, even more questions. I bawled my eyes out. It was a really cathartic experience, a lot of emotion, which triggered my mum off. I could hear her in the room as well. And she's saying, you know, oh my God, what's happening? So it was this real bizarre experience that I just thought, wow, how could I access that level of feeling just from the air that I breathe or through this way of breathing? Um, and what was this? Uh, was I connecting to something bigger than the, the human experience? Mm -hmm. Was I connecting into this uh, spiritual space, um, a, a space that I've, I was definitely ex excited about dancing in because I missed my girlfriend so much, her, from pass her passing away so recently. I thought, well, that felt amazing. But if that's her, where is she? What's going on? Am I just making this up? And we were kind of shared in the group afterwards. Um, and not many people had quite the, as I've just been speaking to my dead girlfriend, of what fuck's happened? What was, and everyone had different experiences in that group. So it was more than treatment. I thought, well, something happened there. Um, and it felt like I felt very connected to her. So that was what got me excited. Is that A, could I feel more connected to her again? Um, could I get more messages from that space? Uh, kind of diet, dancing in that twilight space, but then just intrigued. I'm like, wow. I'd been this kind of, I'd searched for this cure for cancer, uh, all traveling the world with, we were in LA, we were in Taiwan, we were in New York, different spaces, trying all these different treatments. And the one thing I hadn't explored was with us all along. Yes, I'd looked at breathing. We'd done lots of yoga, meditating, things that cover breathing and background in martial arts as well. A lot of breathing happens there. But never to this depth of, no, the breath is what keeps us here in, in the physical body. We, we start our life. We take a breath. It anchors us in the body and we have our life and then we breathe out and our, our breath kind of leaves. There's something in my mind of like something about breathing that is, that's all life is. It's this dance of the physical body and breath. And then when that dance ends, the breath leaves our body and it moves on and we're all connected through breath. So there's this really kind of like beautiful space that I was navigating in. In, the, in that initial session, it was just like, whoa, like a big, um, eye opener and then it was this well let's start working with it a little bit more and peeling off the layers and trying to understand where I'm going and what I'm doing and how this is helping so I think I, in a funny kind of way I felt quite I the wrong word I was just addicted to doing it but I felt excited about doing it more to understand that level of depth or that level of consciousness that I could access purely through breathing and trying to figure out um, what that was but also how it was helping me because that was the main thing it felt like you said I spring in my step the following day and I, and it felt like that it felt like a, a weight had been lifted more energized more aligned and a shift in my mindset as well this kind of kinder voice in my head to to bounce back and move forward and know we're talking about resilience but for me it was that tool that I already had but I just didn't know I had. Um, I just needed to be shown how to use it in another way and use it in an incredible way that can could create this shift and create this space in my physical body, but also in my mindset and head headspace so that I could start connecting to this, this higher space or, or deeper state of, of being. It's, it's amazing even listening to Stu, because I know we've talked about this at length, 
And, you know, you, you said something there about the breath, you know, this thing that we, we have and we sometimes don't realize it. And, it. and it's very in alignment even with, you know, the concept of realizing resilience. It's, you know, this inner strength that we, we have, right, that sometimes we don't realize it until adversity strikes or challenge shows up. And, you know, it was the same for the breath for you. It was like this thing is innate you know it's it's us it's who we are it's who you know what keeps life uh within us it gives us that aliveness if you like and 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 in the very same space i you know i put resilience in there it's like they both got recognized and i seen it you know i witnessed it in you as you went through that that period and the shift was you know so obvious and you know i'm going to come back to the, the breath work in a moment because i think there's something really you know important for us to explore was you know, at, at that time when you were going through that challenge and, and um, you were exploring the breath and you were realizing these, you know, tools or approaches that could help, um, what was it, Stu, that in, inspired you to, to go deeper into that practice? You know, what was it that really connected you to explore further within yourself when you had that first, you know, that, that first big shift in the, the breath session? Well, I think initially from that first session, it, it was it was those questions that had popped up. Am I going mad? Was that real? What just happened? Um, that intrigued me to say, well, let's let's give it another go. Will that happen again? Is this was that one off? I think that's the first kind of step in in any kind of investigation or science project. Was that just an anomaly? Um, so let's dive back in uh, and and have another go. And it was very different the second time, very different the second time, very different the third time, very, very different the fourth time. Um, I'd, I'd actually say it's probably very different every time, but equally as potent, equally as powerful. Uh, so I, I had no intention at that point of this becoming my career or anything like that. I mean, at the time I was really kind of head set about getting back into the music space, which I kind of parked um during the whole kind of cancer period so that was my main thoughts so now let's get back to music but there was just what kept me going was this nurturing space i felt so connected to spirit could you say i mean that's no, that's kind of a, a hard thing to quantify for people so this uh, energy that binds life whatever you believe that to be, I felt like I was touching into that source energy. And that would be different for any, anybody's belief systems. But the, the reason the sun rises and the tree goes outside, whatever makes that happen, I felt like I was tapping into it in the session, which for me was kind of this, this little glimpse, these little light bulbs of, of what life is really about. What is, consciousness what is life what is death what is what is our whole purpose on this planet so the the shift for me was this like insight and that shift went in all shapes and forms because there was after i probably i'd start i did the first stage of training in that particular breath practice and i remember leaving thinking is life some just weird jokes like is this all a game like what is going on here because I felt like I was connecting to this space. This, I know I'm being quite cryptic. This kind of quantum field, or whatever else you could call it. Um, so I went through these ups and downs with this whole practice. I'm like, well, why, why did I have to go through all this shit? Why to feel, to have this realization? And, uh, but has it taken this to happen for me to have this light bulb moment? So it was kind of this bittersweet, like I'm, and then I'd be pissed off well why didn't I find this two years ago so I could have helped not saying that it's the cure for cancer but I definitely think it, it could help support uh, in a huge way because I'm not really sure what that practice is about but that practice is about well, opening up to your physical restrictions in your breathing and the reason you might not be breathing fully and freely could be because of physical things um, tension injury posture illness viruses all these different things that might create tension stress but more often than not it's that mental emotional space through past experience when we go through life experience we create tension in our body to stop feeling 
to stop feeling emotion, energy, emotion as it arises. So any type of life experience, um, you have the anger, if it's holding back tears, holding back laughter, the way we stop that natural flow of emotion is by holding our breath. And we all have had those experiences. From a baby being told, shush, not to cry. We start to realize it's not okay to fully feel in the world that we live in. And I'm not advocating just start fully feeling with everything. You might end up in a straight coat, straight jacket. But it, um, it was a real eye opener to well, what is causing people to be sick. Where's the imbalance happening? Where's the dis-ease? Where, what's happening? Does this just stem from physical blockages in our energy field or, or physical blockages in our body because of mental, emotional experiences? So that was the real thing. I thought, wow, this really can help millions and millions of people. If we can start clearing through, it's a hard word, but trauma, our traumas, and I know trauma is quite a loaded word, but trauma on every scale of what that means. We've, we've all gone through life experience that is going to impact um, the way we think, the way we operate, the way we move. I mean, as simple as if I got on the list after here and I got stuck in the list, tomorrow or the next day, I probably wouldn't get in the list. So that experience, that negative experience has probably shifted my perception on that list and what I do next. So you can see life experience will always change our course. And I might even tell other people, don't even get in the list. You get stuck in the list. So it has a ripple effect. So through life experiences, we start creating these belief systems and patterns and, and how we start to interact and operate in the world. And some of that is great. Some of that is like our true expression in, in this life. But a lot of us, a lot of uh, experiences are heavier and are, are traumatic. So we then start making these different decisions that aren't really aligned to our purpose or our being or our truest self or our higher self. Um, so this, for me, was this tool to let go, let go of all the shit. Let's just drop that and become fully aligned with who I'm meant to be, what my fullest expression is in this human body so that I can move forward. Um, and, and that was the real eye opener. The more I worked with this breath, I was like, I was letting go of the junk that was deeper. I mean, for me, it was grief. Yes, very felt experience, a harrowing experience, a really tough experience. But why was I taking that on so heavily? Why was it so crippling? Uh, and that's probably because of the deeper beliefs around that, which were big boys don't cry. I'd done martial arts all my life. I'd grown up in Scotland. I had a teddy bear called Tough Ted. So you can see how the life experience would then shape this identity that would say, well, if something bad happens, you've got to keep it together. You can't show emotion. Hold it all in. Be there for everybody else. Be strong. Be solid. At the cost of me creating tension in my body, that if I didn't let that free and didn't let that start to open, those kinks in the hose pipe that I created, are just going to create blockages and down the line, then maybe I would have got sick or maybe I would have had issues happen. So it's, I've kind of veered away from the question. I can't even remember the question was, but, but it, the question was <laughs> what, what inspired you to dive deeper into the practice. And, and, and even some of the things that you said, Stu, are, you know, there's really kind of key pieces of wisdom in here to draw out for, for people who are going through adversity. You know, we're going through adversity on a, a grand scale at the moment, but everyone's also facing their own adversities within that adversity. You know, we're we're facing a pandemic, mm -hmm. but then many people are facing grief. Many people are facing, you know, addiction or loss or abuse or there's so many different aspects of the adversity that people are going through. And some of the things that you said really struck me. The, the first was when you talked about how through the breath work you started seeing almost like what I'm going to describe as those glimmers of hope, like seeing life how it really is, I think you said. And that built up some frustration because you felt, you know, why didn't I, I experience that two years ago? But you also said, I then began to wonder if the adversity without that would have I had the opportunity to realize, you know, those gifts, if you like. And, and mm. it's, it's something that's shown up in the other conversations I've had with, you know, individuals who are contributing to this amazing campaign that we're running where they've talked about the need for hope through adversity, the need for, you know, purpose and meaning to be found. And so that was one of the things that you said that really stood out. 
And then another couple was, you know, big boys don't cry in Scotland, right? That's what we were we were taught is growing up. How often do we as people hold things to ourselves and we don't ask for help? And it kind of struck me at that time, you know, you reached out to me, you know, to, to speak. And then you went to breath work and you began applying that. And, you know, I want to capture just how important it is to ask for help during periods when we're going through adversity, to share and release those emotions. And that release, you know, can be through talking, through breath work for you. It released so many of those emotions and felt, you know, allowed you to feel lighter. Um, so asking for help, the need for hope, and then the third thing that you said, which really resonated, you said after that first breath class, you said, I was just a little bit kinder to myself. And I really wanted to capture that because how often through challenging periods is it easy for us to fall into an internal narrative that maybe isn't quite so supportive, that maybe isn't quite so positive, that can be critiquing or um you know, I suppose internalizing self-talk, which just has a detrimental effect on our self-esteem or our ability to believe in ourselves. So those three things really jumped out when you were talking. And and I would love if you could talk a little bit more about them. You know, what was your experience of hope, asking for help, and, and you know, this this release of emotion um, through through the breath work? Yeah, well, there's something that came up there as well. And, and... I think to all some to some degree we're all grieving right now uh, through the pandemic. Life has changed and it's non-negotiable, which is kind of grief. You, we don't have a say in it. It's happened, and life won't be the change. There won't be the same going through it, and, and probably after it as well. So I think everybody is is feeling this grief and having to adapt and change and and. Like you said, these these glimmers of hope shining through. Uh, for me, the, the hope was kind of different. The hope was, I felt the shift in my body. The hope for me was more purpose-driven. I thought, and this is why I do what I do now, the, the hope was, there's hope for other people out there that they don't need to maybe experience this hardship because there's this amazing tool that they already have right under their nose they can just learn this stuff that they can start applying and shifting through this this backlog of of experience that doesn't serve them and um, so they can move forward with hope and um, with that kind of voice in their head and and be kind of to themselves and the world around them so the hope for me was more a purpose driven there was more a contribution how can i how can i share this with the world uh, and that was exciting because I thought, wow. And the funny thing is, if I look back, go back, I said I was in LA doing all these different alternatives. And I said to myself, well, why didn't I find this before? It was probably there. It really definitely was there. It's not a brand new thing, breath work. It's, it's been around for, for many, many years. And I wouldn't have listened at that point. I, it wasn't, if somebody said, just breathe to cancer, I probably would have stuck my fingers up and said, speak some sense. This is ridiculous. How would breathing possibly help uh, in this situation? So it's it's kind of divine timing and, and it would take me to that point to actually listen, to to have to maybe go through grief, to then, I mean, sometimes I look at the whole situation as, as Kef being this martyr so that I could go on and help and support uh, thousands and hopefully millions of people um, with this work. So that was me. The, 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 the hope was that kind of this, this hope for everybody, not just the glimmer of hope for me. It was just, wow, this is very accessible. It's free. It's just breathing. You just need your lungs. We've all got that. Um, it's, it's not exclusive. Kids could do it. Adults can do it. Your grand can do it. It's, it's super easy and it doesn't require... Um, too much understanding or training in, in, in terms of the practice to get results. Uh, so that was the first part of, of the hope side of things. And so, could you, what, what were the other things? The, well, I love, first of all, I want to capture, I love that through that adversity, through that, that challenging period, you found hope and the gift in the form of how can I give this to others? How can I contribute? Yeah. You know, you took your experience, a dark experience, 
and essentially turned it into an opportunity to, to you know, give light to others, to give and contribute to others in a really powerful way. And I've watched that and witnessed that unfold in you. And I know we're both, you know, purpose driven in what we do and, and, and based on our own experiences. And I think, again, that's a, a really beautiful sentiment to know that, you know, some people at this time will be feeling kind of low self-esteem. They'll be questioning their worthiness. They'll be questioning their contribution, furloughed workers, for example. And I think there's a really beautiful message in there to capture, which is saying, you know, how do, how in this moment it may feel like, you know, we've not got much to give or this experience that we're going through is difficult, but there is hope that when we come through it, we'll have learned a, a lot about ourselves. Uh, we'll have learned a lot about our, our own resilience, our own inner strength, the things that have helped us, the things that have shaped us during this time can then be passed on as a really beautiful gift to others. You know, there's always someone who's one or two steps behind you on the journey. And I, and I think that's a really beautiful part to capture to hope for everyone. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that as a, as a bit of a mantra. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's that. I think there's, there's even, we often think we're not, even if you're not contributing as such, but, but I think we all give ourselves, well, I'm maybe speaking for myself, but sometimes a hard time, that contribution could just be picking up the phone and calling a friend. Yeah. So, hey, how, how's it going? Um, and, and just keeping connected and, and being there, being there as, as, as yourself and as service is in whatever shape or form that takes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the two other things that I mentioned, Stu, was one of them you said there, you said uh, you often give yourself a hard time. And, and that was one of the other points, the self-talk, you know, how you found breath work to help you release that, you know, that negative self-talk that will chip away at our self-esteem, that will chip away at us during times when we are facing, you know, uh, a storm or, you know, adversity. So, you know, self, self-talk, how important has that been through your own experience of coming through a, a challenging moment in your life? Yeah, I think, this again, it was, it was all through combination of, of coaching work, actually verbalising and, and speaking, speaking out. And then this inner work with the breath work that kind of rewired the system rewired the the neural pathways in the brain and, and how that was kind of operating so the, the self-talk changed without me feeling like i had to intervene too much uh, initially w- w- initially when i was sort of heavy in the grieving and i wasn't in that great space and people around me had said you should probably go and speak to a therapist and and even then i thought well i they're just going to ask me questions. I don't want to waste the time, waste them. They weren't in the hospital. They weren't there. So I'd kind of put this barrier up against um, opening, opening that conversation. I just kept it really close to me. Um, but again, what the breath did is kind of open that enough for me to then start talking about it. And I, I didn't need to actually go and speak to a therapist, but I had people I could talk to, like yourself and, and others around me, um, to... So I think as the process went on, the the, the talk, the, the internal dialogue, the inner dialogue just started to become way more positive. Um, alongside different practices that you know very well, the kind of morning routines and, and keeping fit and healthy and, and journaling and, and these kind of tried and tested um, tools alongside the breath work that was really helping me just find um, some sort of stability and, and routine and, and things like that. So uh, there wasn't a particular one thing that, that would switch the mindset, but it was kind of this combination of everything that it just started to mold itself. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think that part there, you know, talking about the opening up to ask for help, I really do think that's a, a key part. And, you know, I've had it in my own experience that as soon as I began asking for help, you know, people showed up. And, and people were open to, to helping me much more than I ever imagined uh, when I, I kind of got over myself and got out of my own way. Um, and, and I think, you know, when you talked about the self-talk this year, and I'm, I'm conscious of our time, we'll wrap this up soon, but the, 
the thing that I remember you and I talking about was this concept of forgiveness as well around, you know, like you talked about feeling guilt and shame earlier, some of the, you know, the emotions that, that were present uh, during your time of grieving and, you know, forgiveness jumped into mind because we've talked about that previously and, 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 and how much, again, did that play a, a significant role? What was your, your way to find forgiveness um, or, or self-compassion, you know, in, in those moments? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think my route to initial tackle it was maybe a more of a masculine route. I dived into CrossFit. I was like throwing weights around. It was all very like, rah, let's get rid of, like, get back myself back to normal. This is after kind of feeling quite low. I was like, right, let's snap out of it and, and try and do this, which helps. But the forgiveness part was this really mothering, um, supportive feeling. Because there was a lot of guilt. I felt like should he have gone left instead of right at that part of the treatment? Could I have done this? I wasn't there when she passed away and that was eating me up. She passed away, like I said, on Valentine's Day. And I was always planning to be there, but I had to fly back to sort something out in Scotland and I was going to fly back to Taiwan where she was in hospital. So there's a lot of different things that were kind of playing up. like, And every time I was there, in Taiwan, she always seemed to get better. So there's that playing on my head and I'd left and she got sick again and I went to fly back, but she'd already passed. So there's a lot of stuff like, should I have been there more? Should I have helped more? Or is there, uh, there was just a lot that I blamed on myself. So the forgiveness part came from those sessions. Uh, the, that, like I said, that kind of mothering energy that was happening in the breath sessions, the nurturing, allowing myself to feel it was okay to feel emotion it was okay to let go of that it, it, it sort of expressed these different things that were coming up and and having these deep connections to this source energy like i said this kind of angelic space um it just allowed me to let go let go of that um guilt and, and allow me to feel more kind of innocent and pure about the whole situation. So again, it was, it was for me. It was it was this breath work that was allowing me to to have that that kind of forgiveness element. Um, because everything else, I mean, even the word forgiveness to forgive myself is not even something that would probably fall into my vocabulary beforehand. You'd be like, well, forgiveness is for wimps. We don't forgive. We keep on going. Um, which was my, my approach before all this work. So, I mean, it's only just come up in my head now. It's kind of this balance between masculine and feminine energy mm. as well. There's kind of a lot of this stuff was very macho um, that I was doing, which is great. And that's super positive too, but I kind of squashed this other side that was allowing me to actually nurture and heal and be held and supported. And um, let it be okay to feel, like I said, it's okay to to let go, and and being vulnerable, and letting that vulnerability kind of shift and and flow, then just created that space to to feel more balanced and more more in tune with who I am at a deeper level. Yeah, it's amazing, and and you know it has just been inspiring watching you go through this this journey, and I think. You know, as people are going through difficult periods, and uh, we're going to wrap wrap this up in a moment. But as people are going through this experience, Stuart, from your experience, you know, what what message or hope can you give people? You know, what is it that if people are struggling with, you know, various different um, challenges at the moment, what is the the message that you would you, you know you would give others? Yeah, I mean, listen. Just listen to what that is. So what is the challenge? Um, speak about it. Talk about it. Friends, family, find somebody you can speak to. But then also, I mean, obviously I'm biased about all, you, all I've talked about is, is, for me, is understanding that we can shift. We can shift our state. We can shift our energy. Um, I read something recently, and I've been saying it a lot because it really resonated. And it's, it was to do with the loop of thinking and feeling mm. this kind of feedback loop of if we think the way we feel then and feel the way we think then that's what creates your state of being mm. 
which is really powerful. So if we break that loop, so if, if, for me, if we can change the thought, then the feeling will, will start to shift. So catching that, I'm feeling this certain way, I'm feeling upset, I'm feeling, I've already consciously clocked that, can I start trying to change it with my mind? Or where's the feeling stem from? Well, that comes back to breath because the thought triggers the breath and it's the breath that creates the feeling in the body through the rhythm rate and depth of a pattern which we're breathing. So for me, kind of using either the mind to start shifting or, or using your breath as a tool to say, right, well, what's happening with my breathing right now? Can I change it? And that's for me, the quickest thing that we can do, I mean, I could speed my breath up and feel very supercharged or I can really start to calm and nurture myself if I slow my breath down. And it's that kind of on and off switch that we can play around with. Uh, so kind of working both with just capturing, it's, it's, I guess the overarching theme of all this would be awareness. Yeah. Taking a step back, understanding, well, what's going on in my mind and what's going on in my body um, is both, are both of those creating my state of being and is that state of being I want to be in right now? Um, and, yeah. and then understanding that, kind of detaching yourself from this experience and saying, well, maybe maybe I could take another look or, or take a bit of a shift in this. It's easier said than done because sometimes when we're in it, we're in it and we, we can't um, always take that step. But the first thing for me now is, well, if I'm in it, that might be the, the thought, the thought, the thought, I'm really in it. So what's my breath doing? If I can change the breath, then that's going to send a different signal back to my brain so it breaks the loop. And that's how quick and powerful it can be. And then once that loop is broken, then the thought pattern can change and then the whole state of being can move on. Yeah, it's amazing. So and, and so, you know, taken from that, and it's, it's relevant to what I've been hearing from a lot of the other experts I'm talking to, the first part is that awareness, that noticing. Uh, we talk a lot in coaching, you know, this to notice what you notice. And and I think when you notice the breath is such a, a a potent tool to then change your state in that moment. And I know that Stuart, you very kindly offered to put together a short 10 minute video where you're going to share some breath approaches and, and, and techniques that will help people to, to find, you know, that ability to change their state. Uh, when a lot of people are feeling anxiety or stress or overwhelm, you know, I think it's going to be such an awesome thing to share with our, our community and, and everyone who tunes into this. So hopefully you're still up for doing that for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No I, know, I know you're a busy, a busy man and under pressure, but um, yeah, if you can, if you can take the 10 minutes and, and share, you know, what, one or two of those amazing techniques, which, you know, I've become accustomed to and, and use every day in life now, breath work is a key part of my own morning routine and just throughout my day to change the state, you know, and, I've been fortunate that, that you've been able to educate me through that journey, Stu. So, you know, I'm, I'm hugely grateful for you coming on here today and sharing, you know, a, a story which is close to, both, you know, both our hearts and an experience that we wouldn't wish on anyone. But the light that comes out of you now and what you're doing in this world to impact others, to give hope to everyone is, is quite phenomenal. And I truly hope that anyone watching this today has felt the same inspiration that I have from working with you and, uh, you know, being being one of your best mates over the last, you know, however many years. So, Stu, thanks so much for coming on. I'd love to end by asking if people would like to find out more about your work, they would like to engage with you, what's the best way to go about it? Yeah, so thanks, firstly, for, for inviting me and, and opening this conversation. Um, what have I got going on and where to connect? Um, it's BreathPod. BreathPod.me is the website which lists... Um, what I do in a bit more detail. Uh, obviously, in the current climate, everything's online. So I'm delivering a regular workshop every Wednesday, which I'm actually giving away for free at the moment. So uh, people can connect into that. That's, that's via Zoom, a 90-minute workshop every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, and that's all available on the website. I'm also delivering um, a lot. So I'm quite active on my Instagram. Uh, that's my kind of main space that I've been utilizing as well. So as of next week, which uh, on it'll be Monday to Friday, I'll be delivering um, just twenty minutes in the morning. Twenty minutes in the morning, Monday to Friday, um, eight a.m. in the morning. Um, just this bite-sized uh, little snippets on my Instagram live of using the breath in all different shapes and forms, but really to set you up to start your day right. 
um, to develop this breathwork practice, like you said, you do in the morning and these things to understand the breath and really um, align ourselves before we start our day or, or head on to whatever we're doing that day. Um, so that's, that's IG and then the Zoom one's on the Wednesday. Um, and everything's listed on the website as well. So just connect all different ways. Amazing. And I know just so, because this will likely go live around, you know, the, the second week in May. Uh, so these lives are going to be live throughout May, 8 a.m. UK time, just so that the audience knows, because I think we're going to attract a global audience. Um, but, you know, stay in touch with Stuart's work. It's phenomenal. You're now mixing, Stuart. I love that you're mixing your music background, your, you know, production and your DJ experience to then give this immersive experience. It is mind-blowing stuff, everyone. So, you know, I'm, like I said, massively grateful. One, to have you in my life, Stuart, as a great friend. But two, I just feel the inspiration from everything that you're doing. So, like I said, thank you so much for coming on here today. Uh, we'll no doubt catch up on another Zoom sometime soon anyway. But listen, take care. Send my love to Nova. And, um, and thanks so much again for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.